You know those oddly satisfying gifts? I'm talking about ones like these. Have you ever wondered what if one of those gifts jumped out of the screen and existed in the real world? I know, me too, me too. That's why I designed and built one myself. Personally, I'm drawn to the animations where there's a ball and a track and the track just aligns to the ball right as it's about to go through. There's something about that slight buildup and release of tension combined with the marble machine that's just so soothing to me. Now, I have absolutely no idea how to render one of those animations, but I do know how to design and engineer machines. And that's what's brought us here. Hi, industrial designer Jay here, and I have this grand vision to create a looping ball track, but the center of the track is gonna be moving up and down. So as the ball comes around, it's about to go across the track, and you'll be like, whoa, is it gonna make it? And the moving track is gonna come up to meet it, giving it safe passage across. Then it's gonna drop down, you'll be like, whoa, what about the bottom track? And then the moving track is gonna drop down, and the ball is gonna keep going, looping forever, mesmerizing your faces off. How is it all gonna work? I have no idea. That is Engineer Jay's problem. I do know this, it's gonna look amazing with some acrylic tracks and stainless steel posts. Engineer Jay's gonna come in and just, he'll do his thing and figure out the rest. Okay, bye. All right, thank you, industrial designer Jay. Let's get to work. But where do we even begin? It's best to start with some constraints. In this case, my first constraint is the size of the ball. I found this billiard ball kicking around my shop. It's 50 millimeters in diameter. So we can design the track using the diameter of the ball as the starting point. Now that we have a basic track design, next up is the lifting mechanism. I had a scissor mechanism lying around from a previous project and I decided that that is gonna be the thing that lifts the track up and down. So I fit it into place here and using my CAD, I can see that it's actually gonna work quite well. But how do we actuate the scissor mechanism? For that, I decided to use a cam, which will press against the lower arm of the scissor mechanism. And then using a gear train, I can tie that to the motor and in the opposite direction to a sprocket that will then be connected via a chain to the lifting arm. And this will ensure that the timing of the ball leaving the lifting arm will sync with the lifting and dropping of the scissor mechanism. But is any of this actually gonna work in real life? The only way to find out is to just go build the thing. So let's go do that. But before we do, I need to talk about this video sponsor, which is Skillshare. Learning is an incredibly important part of my process. I started as just an engineer with absolutely no idea how to make a YouTube video. And through the power of online learning, I've seriously upped my game. Seriously, check out my first video and you'll know what I'm talking about. Growing my skills like video editing and storytelling have really allowed me to better share my process with you. And in turn, this has allowed me to turn the creation of kinetic sculptures and YouTube videos into a career, which is incredible. But of course, I still have so much to learn, which is why I'm really excited about Skillshare. I'm especially excited about this class on the art of filmmaking by Dan Mace, so I can make even better videos that I can share with you. If you want to try out Skillshare, the first 1,000 people to use this link will get one month free. So if you're interested, Check that out. And with that, let's get back to building this project. Good morning, everyone. While I was sleeping last night, I had my workers working tirelessly to produce the parts for us. And check these out, they're ready to go. Of course, not everything can be 3D printed. All the parts are ready, so let's do it. Don't you just love it when a plan starts coming together? I love it when a plan starts coming together. Let's move on to the mechanics. I don't know why I always clap at the end. Let's move on to the mechanics. Why do I always clap? I don't know. Sometimes when you're designing, you make decisions and then later realize that they made no sense at all. And leaving this post as part of the base, not really sure why I did that. I should have made it a piece that just screws in like all the other pieces. It honestly may have just been that I got a little bit lazy at that point. Nah. Okay, this is a big moment. I'm gonna attach the scissor mechanism and we'll see if this cam system works. This is one of those not really sure if it's gonna work or not kind of things, but let's see. Here is the moment of truth. Yeah. Oh yeah. The cam scissor mechanism is working. Doing the scissor mechanism, yeah, yeah. You know what, just cuz, let's keep going. I was a little bit concerned about the track segments being a little bit wobbly, but they seem to be okay, actually. Couple more screws, boom. So the preliminary build is done. 
and so it's not exactly working. So now it begins the process of systematically figuring out which parts are not working and replacing them and then trying again. Yeah, I didn't really think it was gonna work on the first try and it's probably not gonna work on the second try either. But we gotta keep going until it works because it could be really cool if it does. I'm gonna set the new parts to print overnight and then tomorrow morning we can test it out and hopefully it works. Good morning. I've made the changes, made some adjustments and things are working way better. So that will control the scissor, beautiful. And this will control the ball dropping. Oh, yo. I actually think this is gonna work. Okay, I think we need to attach the motor. Oh, nervous, I'm nervous. I don't, I don't know if the motor's gonna have enough power. I think it will, I hope it will. Okay, let's do it. More clapping, what the fuck? I literally just spent the last three hours unexpectedly trying to make some really compact electronics to fit in the back of this. And now none of it fits, but it does work, I think. All right, here goes nothing. That's not a good sign. After all that, there was a short smoke. These electronics are fried. We're back to the old reliable here and we're gonna figure that out later. One more iteration, I think we're there. Actually, actually, let's do it. I know I said that this was gonna take one more iteration to fix and it was actually working after that iteration, but there was this one problem based on the physics of the track where the ball would come around and it would drop a little bit before it gets picked up by the lifting arm. Now, in order to make this as mesmerizing as possible, I felt like I really needed to fix that problem. At first, I tried to fix the problem mechanically by just changing the shape of the arm. I ended up trying 10 different arm designs. Ultimately, it didn't actually fix the problem. So what I realized I need to do was I needed to vary the speed of the arm depending on the position. The only way to do that though was to have a sensor that could tell you where the arm was in its rotation. So I added the sensor, added the code that could vary the speed of the arm. The fix is not perfect, but it's good enough. And now finally, it is time to present to you the results of this supposed to be quick project that turned into like a three week thing. Let's do it. Thank you so much for watching this video. This was a super fun project that obviously took longer than expected, but that is to be expected. As always, tons of projects in the works. So on that note, I'm gonna get back to work and I'll see you in the next one.